How do you pipe? pipe. Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man. How you doing? How you guys doing? I'm fine. Shout out to Tunnel. I just heard your last uh, video really nice. Uh, shout out to the Nottingham Club for putting out that Christmas video. And to let you know that Flake that you guys were trying is excellent. I had not tried that Flake in over 20 years. So, season's greetings. Have a great time. Keep it together. Stick together. I enjoy your videos a lot. And I go over and over and I always find something that comment comments that you guys make. For you, maybe it's not insignificant, but for me, it's kind of special. One thing I'm trying to get is see how I can get some of those pipes that are made in England. I called one up and they just don't ship to the Caribbean. So if you know any distributor stateside that, that brings in the Northern Briar pipes and some of the other pipes that, that are made. I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, when I was in the, when I was uh, uh, working as a tobacconist, we used to always get um, uh, pipes from England, Charitons, Ashtons, uh, uh, Upshaws, all the time. And now I really can't, Especially the online. I guess you have to go to tobacco shop. But the online, they don't, they're not connected like that. Or they don't buy by bulk pipes. So, you might buy basically online because it's less expensive for me. And, and I'm, I live on an island. So, it's not like I'm... I can go to the Ohio Pipe Show, Chicago Pipe Show. I wish I could. I mean, I'd have to save, save up five, six thousand dollars. Fly in, stay at the hotel. <laughs> Spend all my time up in there buying pipes and tobaccos, and I don't know what the hell their customs are going to do with me coming back with all that stuff. I probably have to send half of that. By mail. But I don't care. At least once. I got to go. <laughs> Shout out. I forgot I forgot your name, please forgive me. I, my memory is not the same. But you gave me a you posted and you're from Fresno. And um you know for a time I lived in California. I first got out there in 1975. I was stationed in uh, San Diego. I got to boot camp in Great Lakes. Cold weather, man. Oh my God, that wind. Dead of winter, December 12th. I'll never forget that date. We started boot camp at Great Lakes. Here I is. Here I am. With a whole bunch of guys, and I remember some kid up there from Montana. He had never been around a Puerto Rican. And they started asking people about where they're from. And I told him, I'm from Puerto Rico. He goes, Puerto Rican? How come you don't look like Freddie Prince? <laughs> and I told him, man, it's a if I go into explaining how many people come from all over the world, they, they ended up going on the island, it's like a smorgasbord. <laughs> With the predominant genes being, you know, Indian and Spaniard. But you got all kinds of people. I got Celtic. I got Viking blood. I got a Scottish. <laughs> what gives, man? You know? But it's your attitude, you know. A lot of a lot of people go back to what happened to the ancestors, but it didn't happen to you. It didn't happen to me. 
Thank God, thank God where I'm living now, man. I don't know. I could end up being a conqueror or being conquered, and I, I'm sorry. Things happen in the past, and some people, you know, they can't. Not that you can't, you don't forget it, but allow them to affect them. Instead of looking at the past and learning the lessons from what the world went through, and not repeat it, you know? I mean, every tribal group has been conquered at one time or another, and some tribes were extinct. I read a book about uh, how certain tribes were just extinct, wiped away. They call that ethnic cleansing or cultural cleansing. They're no longer in existence. And, and some of them that survived, other tribes took them in. It's happened with the Indians. It's happened with African tribes. It's happened all over the world. You're taking in, you're adopting. How many Americans uh, uh, have been adopted? They, they keep it quiet. It's not shameful to be adopted. As, as a matter of fact, it's good fortune. You, you're lucky you're adopted into, if you're adopted into the right situation. At first you look at it and say, oh, you know, they didn't want me. But so many things can happen. You gotta make, you may gotta make do. You gotta make do with your life. You can't live in the past. You gotta live in the present and try to prepare as much as possible for the future. You know, I live in the present. All the time I was looking in the past. Why did this person did this to me? Why did that person? Not that I acted out on it, but you think about things that happen to you and you wonder why this person you know I thought he was my friend and it ends up he's not my friend and you're wondering what what gives what what causes people to be friends and all maybe he was never my friend in the first place you know with that being said you're here now I'm here now I hope you smoking pipe I'm smoking my pipe I'm blessed. I, I made mistakes through in my life, you know, as a young man, dating different women. Thank God I didn't have no kids. But I mean I didn't have to I didn't have to be a womanizer. You know? Now I was. Before I was married. And um you know what every man does, he's a hunter gatherer, he wants what we used to call poutine. And so you, you, you lie and, and you manipulate and you do things. And later on in life you regret it, you know, because then you realize, wow, that was a nice woman, that was a nice girl. You know, I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have done this, or I shouldn't have done that. And I regret it, and I ask God to forgive me. We try to make restitutions. Nothing criminal, just you want to play with people's minds, people's heads. And when you're young, you don't think you're doing that, but you could you could be doing that, you know, hurting people's feelings. And sometimes you hurt their feelings and they won't say anything because they don't want to lose your friendship. So they, they keep it to themselves and they bury it deep in their heart. Later on in life, they become bitter and they lash out at you and you wonder, what the, what, what happened? You did this to me way back then. And women are like that. Women will not forget. Oh, you did this to him. And, and, and if you catch a black widow that wants to get even, oh my lord, be careful, man. Try to hurt no the young men. You're not serious about a woman, and that woman is not serious about you. Let it be. Let it go. And if Pipe smoking is your lifestyle, you know, let it be known to whatever woman you're dating, you're going to see, let her know this is part of your life, 
you know, my wife knew my, my life. So, you know, lying is really bad. You don't lie unless it's to <laughs> save your life. Some terrorist has you and asking you questions, and you're going to lie. <laughs> no? But I guess you, 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 you learn by doing and going through experiences. Same thing with job. Nobody's born knowing everything. I have not met somebody that walked out of a woman's belly with a PhD. <laughs> it ain't happening. You, you have to learn. It's a process of learning. Even I did. Look, I'm going to confess something to you. I was so far behind in school. And my parents were constantly moving. That emotionally, I just wasn't stable to really sit in the classroom. And I was bullied a lot. And because uh, I, I didn't learn English. I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't understand what, what they were saying. And sometimes they slap my head and say things to me. Later on, I would find out what what it was. And I had a tough time, you know, until in elementary. When I got to junior high school, and I said enough is enough. And when I got home, I was beat up. And my grandmother looked at me and said, don't you let anybody pick on you. And if you come home all marked up, I'm a whoopie. She took the belt out. A lot of people would say, well, you know, that's abuse, you know, people today. But they took a strap to me, you know, once in a while I get out of line. And I tell you, now I look back, I needed that because it saved me. I was a hard-headed guy. And, and then, you know, when I toughened up, I started fighting in school. Good student, didn't mess with you. But if you mess with my friends, and most of my friends were like nerds because they knew I wanted to learn and make, I would ask them questions and so, I was like their protector. So anytime, you know, bullies, big guys try to pick on the nerds and stuff, I would jump in and defend them. And they go, oh, you're a nerd. I said, no, I'm not a nerd. But, you know, I, I, I felt it was un, unjust, you know, picking on them. Sometimes I wonder, is that why the, the nerds have taken over the world? And they're trying to get even? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. All them people, Microsoft, all nerds, trying to get even. Who knows, man, what, what's in somebody's head. You think you know a person and they flip out on you, they go to Las Vegas with a M1A and they start sniping people. And they say, oh, uh, that was Ralph. Do you know Ralph? He lived next door. And you're like, what? Yeah. I said, that's a mild-mannered guy. He would say hi, goodbye, always cheery and everything. Then Ralph Snap went to Las Vegas and started killing people. I'm like, what the heck? You know, so you never know. People do change, man. People change. I met some of the nicest customers. All of a sudden, they get bitter in their life and they don't want to deal with people. They become antisocial. You know? I had mentioned something about sacred pipes. What I mean by sacred pipes is the word sacred means to separate, to separate. It's a pipe where you, it's a separate pipe for 
for for whatever ritual that you want to do. I'm in no way saying, you know, like to worship something pagan or anything like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not pagan. But in the past, indigenous people had their gods and deities and druids and Celtics. They had their the old religions. They had their festivals. They had their feasts. And even they had ceremonies. I remember the, I think his name is historian Herodotus. I think he was a Greek historian who wrote about the Scythians. I think the Scythians are like Czechoslovakia now up in that area. You know, Slavic. The Scythians used to make bonfires and put an herb in it. And that herb, most historians look back to them was like some kind of form of marijuana because they, it was hallucinogens, they would dance with it, dances and stuff like that, you know, whatever. And um, well, what reason I'm saying about it being medicinal is from experience that all my relatives were smokers, tobacco smokers, and they lived a long age. Whether it was genetic, but they used to always tell me it was the tobacco. Not only my family, the community, lots of tobacco. You know, things happened with tuberculosis or whatever, they take tobacco real quick. So, Everything in moderation. Smoke pipe in moderation. You could drink a little wine in moderation. A beer in moderation. Don't let anything become take control over you. Not your wife, not some religious society, church, or whatever. You stay in charge. You define yourself. Don't let people define you. Take a sense of yourself of who you are. Just look at yourself in the mirror. This is what I am. Better yourself. Enjoy your smoking. You know, sometimes you got to put our egos in check. Not, I mean, look at all these people with PhDs and they can't solve the hunger problem. So, it's like that. Life is like that. Just your random thoughts for today. You see the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man. Have a great smoke.